R&B singer R. Kelly will be in court later this afternoon. He turned himself into police yesterday. He faces charges of sexual abuse. Prosecutors say that he had sex with four victims, at least three of whom were underage. The allegations date back to 1998, and if convicted, Kelly could face up to 70 years in prison. For more on this, we turn to Renee Graham, who's an associate editor and columnist at the Boston Globe. So, Renee, these allegations against R. Kelly, they're not new, but they've gained new traction with this Lifetime documentary, Surviving R. Kelly. It came out back in January. Can you talk about the impact of that documentary? Well, you know, if not for a surviving R. Kelly, we wouldn't be having this conversation now. And I highly doubt there would be new charges against R. Kelly. Um, it was a Lifetime series, six parts. It was, you know, widely watched and much discussed. And you had 50 interviews with different people, many of whom were women who were victims um, or alleged victims of, of R. Kelly. I think seeing that night after night, hour after hour, had a big impact on a lot of people and really reignited attention on these allegations. What about the Me Too movement? Obviously, it's a big focus in the past few years. How has that played a role in this particular case? I think what the Me Too movement has done has really amplified the voices of survivors. You know, that's what we've been hearing. You know, before that, you know, the R. Kelly allegations aren't new. They've been around literally for decades. And what the Me Too movement has done is it's refocused attention on what these women have been saying. And I think that's been hugely important. Again, I think that's been uh, a major component in, in leading to these new charges. There are other stars in the music industry. They've responded to the allegations. They're apologizing for working with the singer. What do you think the impact has been of, these, in, of this indictment and, and these allegations on the entire music industry? Well, I know at this point, I think people are almost scrambling for cover. As I've said, these allegations have been around at least since the early 90s. So anyone who worked with R. Kelly in the last 10 or 20 years knew exactly what was going on in terms of what these, what these accusations were. So now you have people like Chance the Rapper, Lady Gaga, Sierra, apologizing for working with R. Kelly in recent years and withdrawing their music from streaming services because they don't want to be associated with him in any way. Renee, you've written in the past about how many of R. Kelly's alleged victims are women of color, and you say they're less likely to be believed. How has race played a role? You know, I, it's, it's inconceivable to me and to lots of people that R. Kelly or anyone could have gotten away with these kinds of accusations if their victims had not been uh, black girls and women. And the sense that people really don't care about what happens to black girls and, and women. So, even though people had heard these accusations, in a lot of cases, they became a punchline. They weren't a deterrent to, to other big artists working with him. It just had the sense that nobody cared about these accusations because nobody cared about the people making those accusations. We know R. Kelly continues to deny the allegations against him. What can you tell us about his response to all of this at this point? You know, I think his response has been the same as it's always been, which is that he's always denied it. Um, he has never once said, well, yes, something happened. No, no. He has always acclaimed you know, or, or, or proclaimed his innocence um, from the beginning. You know, he's always said that, you know, these are lies, that these, people, these are people who are out for money, the people, these are women who are out for attention, that he's never done anything um, non-consensual with anyone. So, you know, I, I don't think that, that we should expect that to change. I think he's going to try to fight these accusations and, and, and charges as, as, as much as he can. You know, we we're reading your latest article, and you compare what's going on with R. Kelly to Michael Jackson. We know HBO is set to release the documentary, Leaving Neverland. It includes interviews with two men who say that Michael Jackson sexually abused them when they were children. Jackson's estate is suing HBO over this documentary. In the article, you wrote that you've been a longtime Michael Jackson fan, but now you're, quote, leaving him. What made you come to this decision? You know, it's, it's very difficult. You know, with R. Kelly, I was never an R. Kelly fan, so there was nothing I was, was giving up. With Michael Jackson, I've been a fan of his since I was six years old. So, you know, the majority of my life, I've been a fan of the Jackson 5 and of Michael Jackson. And I had to suddenly ask myself, why didn't I... It wasn't even that I didn't believe his accusers. I just felt like I was just putting it aside. I just thought, well, I'm not going to deal with it because I love his music too much. And I had to ask myself, what was the difference? Why was I upset if people were playing R. Kelly's music, but I felt fine if they played Michael Jackson's music? So it was, you know, it was kind of a personal thing for me to really kind of look at that and reevaluate um, 
how I felt about survivors and what people said. And, you know, if people are saying now about Michael Jackson's accusers, well, they're just out for attention and money. Well, that's what they said about Harvey Weinstein's accusers, and that's what they said about Bill Cosby's accusers, and that's what they've said about R. Kelly's accusers. So to me, you know, I have to try to evaluate him in the same way that I've evaluated these other men. Renee Graham, we always love reading your columns and having you on CBSN. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rena.